What's up everybody, Jaspreet Singh here and just yesterday, President Biden sat down with Jerome Powell for the fourth time ever in President Biden's time in office to discuss inflation, what's going on with it and how to stop inflation because President Biden is now saying that fighting inflation is his number one priority even though it's not his job to fight inflation and Jerome Powell also says that right now his number one goal is to fight inflation and so they talked about how do they fight inflation with Without causing a recession whose job is it to fight inflation how are they going to fight inflation and what is going to be the cost of fighting inflation so what i want to do today is first go over what did they talk about how are they going to fight inflation what was the whole discussion going on over there if you didn't read the scripts from it second i want to talk about what they said might be coming because it gave some very interesting insight on inflation and gas prices and the economy and third I want to talk about the things that you should be aware of and things you need to prepare for and things to potentially be ready for. So let's talk about first, what did they say? And I took some notes here. That's why I'm looking down over here. But President Biden first kept saying to uh, Jerome Powell that I understand that the Fed is a separate entity from the government. He said that I don't want to do what previous presidential administrations have done where I tell you what to do. So Joe Biden says, I don't want to tell you, Jerome Powell, what to do. You got to figure it out yourself and I'm not going to influence you. What he said was, quote, I'm not going to interfere with their critically important work, the feds. They have a laser focus on addressing inflation, just like how I do. And he said that my plan is to address inflation, starting with one simple proposition, respect the Fed and respect the Fed's independence. So the President Biden made it very clear that he does not want to get in the way of what the Fed wants to do, and he trusts the Fed to do whatever they want to do to fight inflation. All he's saying is, look, you do what you got to do, but we got to fight inflation. Then going a little bit deeper, there was a little bit of history of how presidential administrations have influenced the Fed in the past. So a lot of times nowadays in today's inflationary period, there's been a lot of similarities drawn between the 1970s and today because the last time we saw inflation as high as it is now was in the early 1980s and the reason we got to that high of inflation where it was double digit inflation in the early 1980s was because in 1970 1971 that was when we started to ramp up inflation president nixon took us off of the gold standard started printing a whole lot of money and during that time in the early 1970s President Nixon was sitting down with the then Fed chairman and he said, you need to cut interest rates, you need to stimulate more. And that caused a short term boom, a bubble in the economy and created these asset bubbles, which was good in the short term because asset prices skyrocketed, but it created a lot of inflation. And that created this massive inflationary bubble, which then had to be fought. And that was when uh, Paul Volcker, a Federal Reserve chairman, had to then come in and jack up interest rates. That's when mortgage rates went up to almost 20%, 20% mortgage rates. And the reason why he had to do that was because that was the only way that they could fight all the inflation and stimulus that they did in the early 1970s. And that was what cooled down the economy. So that's why you see a lot of similarities between now and then. But what President Biden and the Fed kept saying was, this is different because... I, President Biden, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not telling you to stimulate. I'm not telling you to do it. You got to figure it out yourself. So that's why they're saying it's different. However, it's kind of a different scenario because the inflation that we're seeing today was caused kind of externally. I mean, we had all the money printing by the Fed. We had all the stimulus by the government. And now it's in response to the high inflation instead of just causing the high inflation. So it's kind of a, a weird thing that they said there. And uh, I read an article, I think this is the Wall Street Journal, where it was talking about our presidential administration today, how when we were printing the $1.9 trillion last stimulus package, there was no talk about inflation. No one talked about how it could cause more inflation, how the $1.9 trillion of stimulus uh, wouldn't make inflation worse. And now here we are today, the same presidential administration is talking about how inflation is the biggest problem, but nobody is still addressing how the stimulus could have potentially caused more inflation. The Fed is not doing it. The government is not doing it. Yet most people outside of the Fed and the government keep saying that, hey, look, inflation is caused by money printing. How come we're not addressing the root cause, the stimulus? So it was just kind of an interesting analysis that we saw happen from there. Which brings me to now, 
what does this mean? What's coming next? Because they also talked about the economy. So the meeting, I think it was CNN that said this was a pointless meeting and they related it to Kanye West meeting President Trump when he was in office talking about building some other things. They said that essentially this was a pointless meeting where essentially Joe Biden, President Biden said, do whatever you got to do, take care of inflation. It's an issue that you need to solve and it's something that I'm working on as well. But the interesting thing is, why did he do it? And this is where some people have kind of come together with this analysis that uh, President Biden is running out of solutions for inflation on his fingertips because he initially tried on the gas side of things to release a million barrels of oil a day. And that's what he did. I think it was in April or late March where they started doing that, releasing a million barrels of oil a day to ease gas prices. And it did ease gas prices in April. And now here we are in May and the highest gas prices are like what, 4.6 to a gallon, $4.62 a gallon across the country, which is the highest gas prices we've ever seen, even after we started releasing these strategic reserves. And then they went on to say that there's a pretty good probability that gas prices are going to get worse. And the reason why is because the EU just agreed to cut off 90% of their oil purchases from Russia. So oil prices are kind of standard across the world. And now that the EU is cutting off their purchases, it reduces the supply of oil even more, which means that now gas prices, oil prices are probably going to go up unless something changes. Unless we see a major change between now and the summer, we could see gas prices go up even more. JP Morgan Chase Bank came out just recently and said that they expect gas prices to hit a $6 average across the country by this summer, unless something significantly changes. Now, if you're already in a high gas price area, California, Chicago, uh, that doesn't mean that you're going to stay at 6% right now. Here, I'm in San Diego. Uh, gas over here in California is already more than $6 a gallon. It's almost $7 a gallon where I am. So gas prices, you know, if they're $6 average across the country, it's going to, again, depend on which neighborhood that you're in. So that was the first thing that they talked about. The second thing that the Fed kept saying was, our goal is to fight inflation without inducing a recession. So they said that they're kind of walking this, this tight rope because they do not want to raise interest rates too quickly and then induce a recession and then make the economy worse because the Fed does not want to see job losses. The president doesn't want to see job losses. We have a midterm election this year. So I know this is where it gets interesting, right? Because the Fed is not supposed to be a government entity. So they're not supposed to be influenced by the government. However, at the end of the day, you know, the government is political. It's a midterm election. Nobody wants to see an economic crash the year of a midterm election or a market crash. So what does that mean? Well, if you stimulate more, you prevent job losses. You prevent markets from going down. You create more inflation, which makes the bubble much bigger and makes the problem much worse. But right now, it temporarily puts a bandaid on the problem. That's what we saw happen in the 1970s. That's one of the things they actually talked about and all the analysts were saying was, hey, in the early 1970s, they kept saying that inflation wasn't a big deal. President Nixon worked with the Fed to create more inflation and that helped him get reelected in 1972. And then what? It created all this inflation problem, it created stagflation, it created a massive recession, which then had to be fought by massive rate hikes, which had to hurt the entire economy, it had to hurt the dollar. Can we please avoid that problem again? So that's where Joe Biden is saying, hey, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but fix the inflation problem without causing a recession. And that's what the Fed is trying to do. But you can try to see where if the Fed starts jacking up interest rates even more, it's gonna make borrowing more expensive, it's gonna make mortgages more expensive, it's gonna make buying a car more expensive already in a time where inflation is so high. So this brings me to the topic of what do you do? Now first, if you wanna stay up to date on what's happening with things like the Fed meeting with President Biden, with inflation, with the stock market, with the real estate market, with cryptocurrency, with what's happening in the global economy, that's why I put together Market Briefs. It's a completely free financial newsletter where my team is working to break down the top finance and business news every day. It's fun, it's witty to read, it's easy to read. I promise you're gonna love reading it. And we do a bunch of giveaways in the newsletter. Uh, just recently, we, right before we hit 100,000 subscribers, we gave away a bunch of things like a MacBook Pro. We gave away a bunch of $50 gift cards. So if you want to join Market Briefs and stay up to date on what's happening, it's a free news editor and I'll put the link for you down in the description below. But the first thing you have to do is really just pay attention because we don't know 
what's going to happen in the economy. We don't know what's going to happen with the Fed. We don't know what's going to happen with interest rates. We can make opinions. There's a real issue with inflation. If there wasn't, uh, the Fed and, and the presidential administration wouldn't be talking about it. Uh, so there's a real issue here. And you have to remember that there's probably an agenda where the Fed and the presidential administration don't want people to panic. They don't want people to worry. Uh, so they're going to keep saying that it's not that bad. However, I do want to contrast that with the media because the media does something completely different. The media is always going to tell you that either the world is ending or that nothing bad will ever happen. So you got to find the truth somewhere in the middle because, uh, you know, from what the media says, things are typically not as bad as they might seem. and They're typically also not as good as the media makes it seem. However, you do want to take everything that the presidential administration, doesn't matter if you're on the left side or right side, you want to take everything that any presidential administration says with a grain of salt, and you want to listen to anything that the Fed says with a grain of salt as well. That way then you can make better decisions with your money. We do have a real issue with inflation. And we don't know how severe the inflation issue is versus the supply chain issues versus the issues going on in Russia and Ukraine. The Fed and the government are hoping that the pricing issues are primarily due to supply chain constraints. That as soon as the supply chain constraints ease up, which right now they are easing, the ports in California are opening up. They're hoping that as soon as the supply chain constraints ease up, that prices will either fall or that they will stop going up, that things will come down to normal, wages will stop going up because the Fed says that they don't want to keep seeing higher wages, that that's contributing more inflation, that the prices of goods are going to stop going up and that inflation will ease. That's what they're hoping for. However, there's a chance that they can be wrong. There's a chance that, hey, the inflation that we're seeing is due to stimulus, that the inflation we're seeing is due to all the money printing, is due to the low interest rates, is due to the economic environments that we created. If that's the case, well, we're not going to know that for a little while. That means the Fed is not going to make more rash decisions. The government's not going to make more drastic decisions until it becomes a problem. Remember, the Fed and the government, they're not proactive, they're reactive. They wait until the problem is defined, and then they react to the problem by trying to solve it. So you don't want to be reactive, you want to be proactive, and you want to protect yourself no matter what happens. That means one, again, I said this before, I know it's difficult, but you need to be living below your means. This is so important. You know, worst case scenario, things get better, and you live below your means. Oh no, so sad, you have a big bank account. Okay, so if you live below your means, yes, you will make some sacrifices, but at the very worst case, you have some extra cash. Now, if things go wrong, and now we're talking about like worst case in the economy, well, now you have cash that you can use to go out and buy distressed assets, whether it's stocks, real estate, crypto, depending on what you're interested in, you have the ability to come in and buy. Second, in a high inflationary environment, savings become less and less valuable. Your earnings become less and less valuable, which is why owning assets is so important. You do not want to try to time the market because nobody knows what's going to happen in the markets. I mean, if we enter a recession and markets go down, we can't predict that. We also can't predict if the Fed is going to continue jacking up interest rates, causing a recession. We also don't know that if we enter a recession, if the Fed will start changing course and start cutting interest rates and start stimulating and start creating inflation, which would cause a bigger asset bubble. Uh, so, you know, we don't know what's going to happen, which is why don't try to time the market. Keep buying. Know which assets you want to own. Do that research and then have some cash put aside that way if an opportunity arises, things go down, that's when you can come in and buy because those types of crashes build more millionaires than any other time. You know, like Warren Buffett says, be greedy when others are fearful, be fearful when others are greedy, but when times are good, prepare for when times are not so good. So this is where you wanna be educated, have some extra cash put aside, and I know it's hard now with all the inflation that we're seeing, but work to put some extra cash aside that way if an opportunity arises, you can capitalize on it and just understand that we're gonna see a lot of volatility. The volatility is not going away. The inflation is not going away next month. Uh, and so be ready for whatever will happen and use those down markets, down days as opportunities. And just understand that patience is the real key. Like Warren Buffett says, uh, the stock market is a tool that moves money from the impatient to the patient. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see why we might be entering a once in a lifetime opportunity to build wealth and what you can do to capitalize on it, I already made a video covering it and you can watch it by clicking that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling. When the 2020 pandemic happened, that was when the stock market and cryptocurrency was the biggest opportunity. Next time, 